college basketball numbers guru Ken Pomeroy joins us on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Ken, welcome back to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me on again, guys. BYU currently 56 in your latest Ken Palm ratings. They just knocked off Colorado, who was 54 in that same list. What were your observations of BYU and Colorado in person at the Marriott Center on Saturday night? Yeah, I mean, I think that was the best game that BYU has, has played to date. You know, the big kind of bugaboo for them so far this season has been uh, perimeter shooting. You know, they're a little bit more uh, – the offense goes a little bit more through the post this year with Eric Mika back and, and playing really well. And uh, But they've struggled from the outside. They kind of need both things, I think, working to be successful going forward. And, uh, you know, they kind of had a breakout game uh, from the perimeter. And that was really, I think, a, a key reason why they were able to uh, pull away there at the end and beat Colorado. What goes into the Ken Palm ratings? Because we've used that uh, very heavily this season. We, we uh, enjoy having a context for every game. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of the, the purpose behind it was to you know give people some information on every team. Obviously, Division One basketball is is a huge universe, a little bit different than, than football. You know, there's 350 teams, so uh, there's a lot of teams you play that you don't really know a lot about, even if you're a you know a hardcore fan. But uh, yeah, what goes into it is just looking. You know, the ratings themselves look at, at points scored per possession, points allowed per possession, um, adjust that for. Uh, who you played, you know, the quality of opponent, where the game was played, when it was played. Uh, so you know, a few factors go in there and, you know, just try to spit out a, a pretty decent representation of, you know, how good every team's offense uh, and defense is around the country. What was the most surprising stat from BYU in Saturday night's win versus Colorado? I know you already referenced the three-point shooting. Was there anything else that really stood out? Well, uh, I mean, to me, Stephen Bayo getting 21 minutes, that was probably the – the most surprising thing, I, you know, he played, uh, I think, 20 minutes total up to that point. So, uh, you know, it's even, uh, you know, I know we're not too far into the season, but, uh, you know, it's not like he's been hurt or anything. He's been available and, uh, you know, just hasn't gotten the call. But, uh, obviously, uh, Dave Rose saw some need to uh, to get him in there and get some more depth at the guard position and uh, worked out pretty well. You know, he played well, and I think uh, you know, his ability to uh, – both defend and, uh, you know, make the occasional three-point shot as he did in the second half uh, on Saturday night uh, is going to serve the Cougars pretty well. We're about a third of the way through the regular season, uh, 10 of 31 games for uh, BYU. Is there enough data to begin to say what you can expect from a given team like a, a BYU moving forward? Yeah, yeah, we're getting to the point where for most teams, you know, we know pretty much who they are. That's not to say that, you know, teams can't improve or, you know, there's, there will be a handful of teams that uh, look a lot different uh, in March than they do right now. But for the most part, you're locked in. Like, we know BYU is not on that plane with Gonzaga and St. Mary's. You know, they're a step below. How far below is, you know, still to be determined, I guess you could say. You know, are they good enough to, to pick those teams off at home or are they not? I mean, that's, that's what we'll learn in the next uh, few weeks. BYU will play St. Mary's and Gonzaga at least four times, maybe one more time in the West Coast Conference Tournament in Vegas in early March. Statistically speaking, how many of those games will BYU win, Ken? Well, uh, let's let's put it this way. I, I have them projected right now to go 13-5 and five in conference play. So, uh, obviously, four games against those two teams and then a bunch of games against the, the bottom feeders of the conference, of which there are. Uh, far too many, you know, for a team in BYU circumstance and these quality wins. But, um, you know, if you can just do the math there, uh, you know, they're they're probably going to lose three out of four. You know, I think uh, an optimistic uh, viewpoint would be, you know, split those two, split those four games, get to go two and two, um, and, you know, maybe only lose one to the rest of the conference. And, you know, now you're 15 and three. And now you're, now you're in, in play for an at-large bid. But, um, if I had to predict, I'd say they, you know, they probably get one, one of the two at home, lose both on the road. I mean, I think that's what you'd expect at this point. With those projections, that makes the uh, Illinois game big because BYU probably needs that one on its resume. You have a, a 47% chance of BYU winning, so close to 50, and a one-point uh, uh, margin of loss there. This, this Illinois game ends up being a pretty good, big game for the Cougars Saturday. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, the Colorado game, you know, you had to figure that was a must-win. Uh, in the Illinois game – Probably a must win as well. I mean, not, you know, not in the literal sense. We could concoct a, a scenario where they lose that game and they win the rest of their games. And, you know, if that happened, obviously they would, you know, get a, get a tournament bid and get a pretty good seed. But, I mean, realistically, knowing, knowing who the Cougars are, they're, you know, they're not going to run the table in conference play. Um, 
So, yeah, they really need that Illinois game pretty badly. It's, it's a tough one, too, because, as you said, you know, it's basically a toss-up game. Illinois hasn't really played that well. I mean, they're, they're probably headed for, uh, you know, bottom third of the Big Ten finish. You know, they, they don't look like an at-large team uh, at this point. So it's a game that, you know, you win, you're not going to get necessarily um, a lot of publicity from, from doing so. But if you lose it, people will start kicking dirt on you. So, um, so it's, a, it's a tough situation. It's not necessarily going to be a quality win, but you really need to just avoid um, another loss that won't look all that good. I hate when people kick dirt on me. Yeah, so BYU needs to go in uh, with the mentality to win that one. I, l- I love uh, on location on the uh, schedule on your website there that it says semi away. That's the perfect description because it's in Illinois, but it's not on campus. Finally, someone with some smarts to <laughs> define it well. So thank you, Ken. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's uh, yeah. I think the NCAA actually will will treat that game as a, a neutral game for purposes of of the RPI. But uh, clearly, um, Illinois has some sort of advantage there. Obviously, it's not a home <laughs> game, but uh, they'll have a, a few fans of that game. I'm what? sure. Was BYU, let's see, semi away for, let's see, Utah State? No, that's just straight up neutral. Yeah. Because it's neutral for Utah State, is that why it's not semi away? Exactly. Yeah. Kind of a, kind of a halfway point there for the yeah. two schools. So, you know, it has, it, you have to look at, at both participants, obviously. And, and in the case of playing in Chicago, obviously, Illinois has a quite a shorter trip than BYU does. Ken, no surprise, uh, the top three in the West Coast Conference go as follows, Gonzaga, St. Mary's, and then BYU. Who's the fourth best team in the WCC that could give the top three some problems this year? Oh, man, do I have to pick? It's, uh, it's a, bad year for, <laughs> a bad year for the rest of the conference. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. You know, like, you know, every year going in, you know, the, the other uh, seven teams are not going to be all that good. But uh, in years past, there's at least been like one or two that are kind of like you're, you're kind of hopeful. You know, maybe they can, you know, be all right and it won't be a bad loss if you lose to them. But this year, man, I mean, the, the, the rest of the conference, you know, obviously a lottery building jobs there, some coaching changes. Um, it's, you know, it's not a surprise when you look at, you know, like, you know, San Diego or Santa Clara and they're not playing well. I mean, that's kind of a perpetual theme in the conference but um, right now I have Portland at rank 154th and they are the the number four team in the league and I'm just looking at my projected standing so I you know I mentioned BYU at 13 and 5 Portland is projected for fourth place at 8 and 10 so uh, wow already (laughs) already the computer sees uh, you know pretty huge separation between third and fourth in the conference wow we, we've got to use that drop. Do I have to pick? That's going to be, <laughs> that's going to be a great one. Hey, who's the best team in college hoops right now in your opinion? Uh, in my opinion, it's the, it's the Duke Blue Devils. I wish I had some sort of like wacky contrarian answer to that, but I mean, they've been just so good so far and uh, have not been particularly healthy. Uh, you know, they're just getting uh, Jason Tatum back, who is, uh, you know, their outstanding power forward. Should be a top five pick in the draft. Um, if not better, you know, top two or three maybe. Uh, so they're just getting him back into the fold. Uh, Marcus Bolden is another freshman who they're just getting into the fold. They're waiting for Harry Giles, who is a third stud freshman who presumably will be back on the court maybe uh, late December or at some point in January. Uh, so uh, they got those three guys that are just kind of working into the mix right now, and still I think they played like the best team in the country, even though they did suffer an early defeat to Kansas. But, um, but it's a really, really good team. So I'd, I'd hitch my wagon to Duke at this point. If you'd like the full menu of the Ken Palm goodness, how do they get it, Ken? Uh, pretty easy. You know, just go to KenPalm.com and uh, click the old subscribe button. It's uh, a mere $20 in the next 12 months. You get all, all sorts of statistical goodies if you're into that sort of thing. Great stuff. We appreciate the time, my friend. All right. Thanks for having me on, fellas. Ken Pomeroy on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, your values, your timeline, your financial future.